G'day, how you going? Welcome to the Green and Gold Life. Hot dang, what a beautiful day. It's one of those autumn days around the 20 degree mark. Um, this morning it was like, I don't know, five or six degrees, no frost on the turf yet. It was like a little bit dewy, something like that, but um, yeah, no, just a beautiful day. So um, the lawns responded well to that FERT app that we put down last week. So um, you wanna be careful about throwing out a whole bunch of nitrogen this time of year because uh, if you haven't got the temps to support growth, what you can actually end up doing is giving that lawn a whole bunch of disease. So just steady on with the nitrogen this time of year. Um, if you are looking for a color, color response though, try using uh, liquid iron instead. That'll, um, that's another part of the uh, photosynthesis molecule. And uh, sorry, <laughs> that's another part of the chlorophyll molecule rather that helps boost photosynthesis. <laughs> liquid iron, because liquid iron is a part of the, uh, what is it? The chlorophyll molecule and uh, helps photosynthesis as well. So if you are looking for that color, color response, liquid nitrogen is the way to go. <laughs> All right, so with this change of season, I'd like to do this four or five part video series on Tiff Tuff versus Kaikiri throughout the winter period. So the main aim of this experiment is to try and test which turf variety was going to hang on to that color the longest throughout the winter period. So um, we get some wicked mad frost here in the Radelaide Hills. So my bet is they both go dormant, but I'm thinking one might handle it a bit better than the other. So the few parameters we're going to measure throughout this experiment are stress signals. So we're going to see what lawn looks a little bit more stressed than the other one. We're also going to look at dormancy resistance, so which one can hang on to colour the longest throughout uh, the Adelaide Hills weather. And we're also going to have a look at the spring response. So when our soil temps start bumping up again, which one's going to spring to life a little bit quicker than the other one. So elements we're going to exclude in this experiment are things like drought resistance, <laughs> obviously. Uh, things like wear resistance and self-repairing, things like that. So I'm aware we're not going to have active growth throughout winter time. My main concern as a homeowner at this instance will be colour retention. So that's going to be the main measurement we're looking for in this little experiment. So there are other warm season turf varieties you could consider testing as a part of this little trial I'm doing here, such as buffalo and zoysia but I don't have them here on my property at the moment. Um, so it's quite important to control variables, so uh, such as shade, exposure, aspect, all of that sort of stuff. So um, to try and test it on another property wouldn't give us accurate results. So at this point, mate, we're just testing Tiff Tuff and Kaikuya. So our first variable we want to look to control is photosynthesis. So in order to control that, the only variable I have control of is height of cut. So I, don't, I can't control cloud cover, uh, you know, daylight hours, that sort of thing. All I can control is the height of cut. So I'll be maintaining around that 25, 30 mil mark, somewhere around there. That way um, we've got roughly the same surface area of leaf on both of the varieties. So uh, we can measure it that way. The next variable I can control is the aspect. So which part of the turf is facing the sun? So we can do that through our plot selection. We'll go through that in a minute. We'll run through which parts will be running throughout the experiment to test. The next variable I need to consider is environmental exposure. I need to make sure that there's not much influence from other things such as structures or microclimates, that sort of thing, so that the turf has a fair fight and it's not being protected by structures from frost or rain or light, that sort of thing. The next variable I needed to consider was nutrients. So I went out at a quarter of a kilo per 100 metres squared uh, for both the Tiff Tuff and the Kai Koo. So um, I thought it was important to equate those two because it wouldn't be a fair fight if the Kaikuyu was going out with more nitrogen than the Tiff Tuff, even though the Tiff Tuff has uh, lesser nutrient requirement than that of the Kaikuyu. So um, I've gone out equal. I'll leave that for the scholars to debate, but uh, <laughs> that's what I've done. The last variable we need to consider is watering. So I'm currently going at it about that quarter inch per week mark because you know, it's not, not terribly hot here at the moment. You know, the lawn doesn't need that much water. So uh, at some point I'll actually cut that off completely, but the idea is to maintain an even water cycle between both the varieties. The one thing I want you guys to keep in the back of your mind is my environment is not the same as your environment. So I'd hate for you guys to try and equate the two. So winter here in, in the Adelaide Hills is definitely different to that of Adelaide and miles different to that of Queensland as well. So to try and equate the two, to try and equate the two environments would be quite silly. So don't take my results as your results. So I'll highlight a few things throughout winter time and you know, 
observations that I've made, but they might not be applicable to you, so just keep that in the back of your mind, eh? All right, let's go and choose some plots. <laughs> All righty, here we are out the front. So this is gonna be my Tiff Tough plot for the experiment. So I've chosen a spot that's about six or seven meters off of the house and it still gets mostly sunlight all day until the sun sort of ducks in behind the house. Now, that does that too out on the kaiku out the back, the, how the sun will duck in behind the shed. So this area here gets roughly the same amount of sunlight as, as the kaiku does. The only difference being this retaining wall. So this retaining wall has the potential for a little bit of a microclimate, but I think we're far enough away from there for that influence to be negligible. So this is gonna be the spot here where we're gonna test our tiff tough against the kaiku. Right, let's shift out the back, see if we can find another spot, eh? <laughs> Alrighty, here we are out the back. Now we're again, we're about that seven meters off the shed uh, as we are equidistance from the house. So should be roughly the same amount of exposure that the tiff tough is getting, obviously less the retaining wall that's here. So uh, I believe this is going to be an excellent spot for our other trial because up by the house, you know, a little bit closer to the retaining wall up there, it's gonna get a lot more sun and that part up there is actually a little bit under stress at the moment. I believe I've got mole crickets up there that's it, that's another video topic. So we're not gonna go into that here. But this is a nice healthy section, same as the Tiff Tough. And uh, yeah, I believe this, the exposure, I believe the magnitude of exposure is gonna be similar to that of the Tiff Tough. So here we are, these are our two plots for the experiment. All right, let's get a mow on, man. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. You know, stick around, see how the trial gets on over winter time. All right, you guys do me a wicked mad favor and take it easy. I'll chat you on. <laughs>